G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab. I'm here on day two at the Smart Energy Council's Expo in Sydney with Darren Nankerville from Pixie. <laughs> G'day, Darren. G'day, Glenn. Yeah. How are we doing? Good, good, good. Now, Pixie, for those who don't know Pixie, it's a very cute name, I must say, but fun fundamentally, in a nutshell, what is Pixie? Well, Pixie is a Norwegian-based uh, company. We uh, PCS company, so our core technology is an inverter. Um, but then we specialize on making pre-built, pre-integrated um, systems and um, using our modular inverters, which are 48 volts, we can um, build different systems in different configurations. And one of the systems we're looking at today is Pixie Home. Right, so this is designed for, kind of, I'm familiar with Pixie in the sort of, you know, the more uh, comms sort of industry, uh, CNI, community battery, but you're now doing a home system. Yes, yeah, so we're taking all that technology from the um, telco experience, the DNSP experience, and we're building a smaller um, system more optimised around the home. Uh, so taking a modular inverter, making it the, the, the kilowatt hours and the MPPTs and the grid forming inverters that are sized optimally for a residential solution. So basically, we've got a box here, but I think the interesting thing is what's inside. Let's have a look inside the unit. Yeah, sure. Let's open it up. So normally this wouldn't be accessible to the customer? Yeah, this wouldn't be accessible to a customer. This is uh, access here for um, this is access here for the electricians and the people that are working on it. Yep. So tell me a bit about the Pixie Box. Yeah, sure. So the Pixie Box is here. Um, this is our core technology uh, and basically what what's the heart of everything here. So we have a 3.3 uh, kilowatt, uh, sorry, .3 kilowatt um, inverter. It is modular in nature, software defined. So basically this can be an MPPT, a grid forming inverter, AC coupled inverter, DC to DC, and a rectifier, all in one. And the way we uh, tell it what to be uh, by software is some dip switches in the back of the rack. And as we place it in there, um, it uh, software defines to the function of the rack. And um, then we put it in and we basically will operate in, um, in that function. Wow, so 3.3 kilowatts in a box that's Amazingly small. I remember when a three kilowatt inverter weighed forty nine kilos. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's the the core um, like uh, technology underneath is a very efficient, very small inverter, being able to operate in bidirectional uh, and then being software defined. Um, so it means that we can change from that MPPT to being grid forming by just switching a spot. So it can be a three point three kilowatt inverter, a three point three kilowatt MPPT, and it can be a three point three kilowatt rectifier. Correct. And it's software defined by dip switch. By dip switch. Yep. You just pulled this out. If it was running, could you do that? Yes, you can. Yeah. So it's hot swappable. Yes. Just like a hard drive in a RAID. Yep. Yeah. The idea is that um, you know you can have one inverter for all different functions, and if there's something goes down, you can take something out of a box and put a new one in. Takes the software, and away we go. And I noticed you didn't actually need a tool to do that. No. No. So that's the idea: is that um, non-technical people could do that. Right. So it's perfectly safe to unplug it while it's running under load. Correct. What will you lose when you take it out? Um, you'd lose capacity. Um, so if this was a solar inverter, we'd lose the solar. If it was a grid forming, we'd lose some capacity. The rest of the systems will keep operating. Um, and the, but the idea is that you know, like it, it, if possible, you do shut the system down before you pull them out. But you know, that is a situation where you can do it. And we do testing of that, so we pull it out and see that the rest of the systems operate. So most people, when they give the specs for an inverter, they'll say uh, so much DC power, so much AC power. Yeah. How do you specify this? Yeah, so that's uh, quite an interesting one. So um, with the Pixie Home, we've gone and selected some power bands, and we say you can get you know, this much kilowatts and this much MPPT and then this much kilowatt hours. Um, but technically with, with the Pixie system as a whole, you, you can change the configuration to suit your need. We'll be selling this product with uh, 10 kilowatts of uh, single phase or three phase and 10 kilowatts of um, MPPTs. We're gonna extend that also out to 20 kilowatts of MPPTs and it can go up to 20 kilowatt hours of battery. 20 kilowatts of MPPTs, but you'd have no room for inverter uh, function then? Yeah, so we will actually then put another shelf in and we will have uh, three shelves here, so 10 and 20. So you can do both single and three phase with the same product? Correct, yeah. Yeah, the, the inverters, they communicate with each other, but they also look at their AC connection and they decide, am I connected to the same phase? And they all cooperate together. So each Pixie box is single phase, so you need at least three to do three phase. Correct, yeah. Can you do split phase? 
Split phase is an interesting one. <laughs> we can take, take that one offline. It is, it is an interesting scenario and we are looking into it um, because it is, we get a lot of requests for it lately. At the moment, we're looking at um, two systems to do split phase. Um, but yeah, the, the angle is something that we, we're looking at. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of storage, what's the storage capacity of the Pixie Home? So Pixie Home is up to 20 kilowatt hours. Um, we do it basically in a chunk of um, 5.25 uh, kilowatt at 5.12 kilowatt hours. And they're obviously modular in nature and you put them up and to get 20 kilowatt hours. So, so is there a minimum number of batteries? The minimum number of batteries is the C rating of the battery and the, in the amount of inverters you have installed. Um, and as we are selling it as a complete product, you, you get the different formats. So you get a, the 10 kilowatt hours or the 20 kilowatt hours. Right, so the C rating is? Uh, 1C. 1C, wow, okay. Uh, so that's quite impressive. Now, uh, around the back, I notice you've got another access portal. That's more like for service technicians? Yeah, that's um, for service technicians. Um, so if we come around the back, and just to make the point that this is uh, for licensed electrical workers because we are now accessing the interior. Correct. But you allow that um, to happen. It's not just a, a pixie technician. It could be no, a, a local yeah. electrician. It's, it's a tool, tool access. access. Yep. So you have to have the right tool to be in there. Um, you are still protected and you are still safe by IP2X. So everything is IP2X from the back. The screening is done here. Yep. 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 So you can't put your fingers in and then the terminals are all IP2X as well. Right. So it's touch safe, but you need to know what you're doing. You need to know what you're doing in the back here. So yep. why would you need to access this area? So the, way, the reason you might need to access the area is to connect up your ethernet cables, um, to connect your batteries during installation. Um, and then if any, any of the parts need servicing as well, like, you know, the, there's access to everything through this section here. So we've got our surge protectors here and we've got our terminals, but down the bottom, we've also got our, our batteries. So if you needed to get into access to turn your batteries on or off or, or connect the batteries, that's where we would go to. So um, each battery has its own double pole circuit breaker, so. Correct, double pole, individual BMSs on each system. Um, they all communicate with our with our gateway controller, um, so we know the temperatures, the cells, the currents of every every battery, yeah. and we monitor that from our controller. But yeah, double pole, and they can technically be isolated, and the system will keep operating because um, they're in parallel. So these are obviously you know printed pictures of a battery, but you've got real terminals on a real battery. Yeah. So where's the cables for those? Yeah. So the cables are down here. So these are our cables. Um, and our cables are connected on. So in a commissioning scenario, you would be connecting those cables on. There's a red and a red and a black here to be connecting them on. Um, and then obviously our AC connection is down the bottom here. So this is our AC connection terminal for um, connecting this configuration as you can see set up for three phase. Um, and then this is our GLAN port that we are coming through. So bottom, bottom entry Correct. for AC and DC. Uh, the, the DC comes up the side, but the AC goes out the side and the MPBTs would be um, right. Yeah, and I notice you've got uh, a cooling system on the door. Yep. Is this suitable for a wide temperature range? Yeah, so the Pixie boxes are um, suitable up to fifty-five degrees ambient. Uh, they will run full power up to fifty-five. Wow! With the batteries, though, the batteries are going to run up to forty-five degrees. So, ideally, the system would be set situated that you know we're not going to be hitting those higher temperatures but we have inbuilt predictions to derate the system when the temperatures get hot um, but we are designed to run up to 55 uh, ambient uh, on the pcs the pcs is in a separate cubicle you might notice that the um the pcs is separate from the batteries so we actually have the, the air and cooling path for the pcs is slightly different to the batteries so the batteries can be operating at a different temperature all right so for those not familiar with the terminology, PCS, power conversion system, yeah. uh, basically an inverter yeah. or MPPT. Yeah. 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 So what about monitoring? You said it's got ethernet. Sure, yes. Yeah. So the monitoring is actually done through our gateway controller. Um, so if we come around here, um, so the gateway is in here. It's another, another core technology of Pixie. Um, we provide a gateway which has Modbus and MQTT. It can be accessed through ethernet and through the Wi-Fi. And that provides us uh, full access to our inverters. So you can program your inverters, you can see what's happening with the batteries, you can monitor the system. And there's no software required to access that through the ethernet. So it's a web page. Um, oh, so you've got a browser, I mean a server built in. Correct, yeah. So we can look at it that way, but also what we have is an, an app. So we have an installer app that allows easy installation and we have a customer app. Um, to allow for the customers to be able to view the system. The installer app, uh, you scan the system, it gives you all the um, serial numbers and the configuration, and then you set the system up with the installer app. 
Uh, but the gateway will give you the customer that monitoring. Um, it, it's a very comprehensive, as I said, we've got all the battery data, we've got all the inverter data. We also monitor the meters as well. So if we have a meter for um, an incoming meter, we, we display that in our GUIs. Um, so we can actually see a full stack of what's happening with us. So if you want to have a self-consumption profile, the meter at the switchboard, the main switchboard, yep. is communicating with this control, uh, control system. Cool. Now, in terms of uh, you know this product being delivered uh, to be installed, are the batteries delivered separately? We do deliver the batteries separately. We want to make sure it's nice and light. Um, so this can be lifted by two people, um, but it is relatively light, and then each battery is lifted in separately. So we, se we, we deliver the batteries on a pallet, and this comes on a separate system, so we can lift them in um, separately. Right, so um, it's pre-configured, all the cabling's already there. It's really just uh, bolting on uh, your battery terminals, bring in your AC and DC in. Uh, uh, maybe an upstream meter for self-consumption and full, full visibility, yeah. uh, and then configuration through an app. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. Or through a browser? Or through, through a browser. browser. Oh, okay. And once that's all done and you've got it, uh, is it any cloud-based? Uh, yeah, so we do have the yeah we do have the Pixie Cloud that allows for monitoring, and the app is the um, is for the Pixie Home is the main main monitoring uh, platform. Yeah, and it's just coming soon. Coming yeah, soon. <laughs> well, um, you know we're we're currently going through the final stages of release at the moment. Um, we obviously have our first product here at the moment, and yeah, we're just working through the uh, the Australian. Um, uh, onboarding, um, and so we're, we're hoping to make it available uh, very shortly. Um, getting a lot of interest now around it because a lot of uh, people are really liking the accessibility and the way you can just get access to all the parts and how you can you know, stand up and work on it. Um, so yeah, we're taking a lot of inquiries now for it. Can you have more than one Pixie Home? Yes, you technically can. Um, there's no reason why there can't be more than one operating on the system. Um, there is a lot of density in this, so we do get up to 30 kilowatts in it. Um, and 20 kilowatt hours. So we do have a lot of density, but you can run multiple parallel to the system. And then once you start getting that, then you start going to the, the Big Brother, um, which is like our PSXD, and the, um, uh, which is a 60 kilowatt system, and then the Pole Top, which is a 30 kilowatt system. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, thanks very much, Darren. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay.